Hey, welcome back to another day, another vlog. Hope you're all well on this Tuesday, 28th of April. <sighs> Big day, a uh, fair, fair bit I wanna get through. Um, as always, we'll run through how we're going with the current video. Pretty good, I've trimmed the photos. I've got a heap of focus stack stuff in this one. So I had to trim them, them, a lot of jumping in and out of Photoshop and back into Lightroom and, and playing it around. But got some good shots, uh, pretty happy. There's a fair few there. I think it's like 15, 16, just rough ones I've got marked up. So now I've got to go through, clean them all up. So normally I'd have that done tonight and then start smashing the video, but I've got to, <laughs> I have a big chance here tonight. And fingers crossed this weather stays. Um, using the Windy app, which I got off a very good friend, uh, well, I consider him a friend, but a guy I follow, Photo Tripper, put us onto a Windy app, which is fantastic. It tells you about clouds, low level, high level clouds, if you're shooting astro stuff. Tonight's going to be super, super clear here in Perth. Uh, so if you are going to do any stargazing or astro shots, tonight's your night to get the camera out, get your. Uh, uh, GoPro out, whatever you've got, take it out and see if you can't get something because it should be crystal clear for from about 8, 9 o'clock onwards. I think the moon goes down at about 9 o'clock uh, and then from then on in to about 3 or 4, there be, should be no clouds pretty much whatsoever floating around. So I've got a good chance. So while well, that's happening, I'm going to try and get out and uh, get, get a really good shot. I only had like half an hour last time when I uh, did my last video on this. I'm gonna go back to the same spot. Uh, out to Mundirin and see if I can't find a, get a better shot. It was beautiful and dark out there, so all the aspects I wanted. Uh, hopefully I can get something that's uh, to add to that video to really make it sparkle. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really positive about it. I've gone through all the different weather apps, everything, I've checked everything. All seems to correlate. We're just gonna hope that that pans out. I'll check in the afternoon and into the evening before I drive out there. It's about 20 minutes drive, 20 minutes, half an hour drive uh, before I go out there and then I'll go from there. But it's fingers crossed, this could be the one I want. But anyway, um, so that's been, that's been, in that regards, video obviously gets pushed back a little bit. But at the moment, it's looking really good. I'm, don't try to rush too much to get exactly out on a certain date or time for the videos. I know it's probably a little bit annoying, um, but it's, I'm just trying to get as fit it all in. Uh, I, I spend about probably two to three hours every morning, if not more, uh, chasing up info for this show. So you add that and then an hour or so to, by the time I upload it, put all in, get all that done an hour, that pretty much that's pretty much four, five hours, six hours a day I'm doing on this. So I don't have, I, that's time I probably could be doing videos, but I don't. Um, we'll see how we go. Once we get to 365, that's the goal. We're at 253. We've got another 100, 110 shows to go. Uh, once we've done a year of daily vlogging or, or news, or just basically a daily vlog, I'll then make a decision if I want to continue it on and um, go from there. But. Uh, I'm really enjoying this form factor. It's good, it's alive, it's not cut or cut in. It's just as I get it to you. So that's why sometimes they're a little bit long when I waffle on. But <laughs> I do try to get you as much information as quickly and fast without having to edit and stuff around. I just couldn't do that every day. It's not that I, my comp For one, my computer just couldn't take it. Uh, it's just can't handle doing a normal video, let alone to do this every day to cut it. It'd be, yeah, I'd be, I would have, I'd rip every bit of hair I've got left out. <laughs> Rightio, um, so that's sort of where we're up to at the moment, but yeah, looking good. Look, it's looking good at the moment, the photos are looking good. Rightio, got a fair bit in there. Um, I might go backwards on my list and go forwards. Rightio, um, Kodak has created the world's biggest jigsaw puzzle. It's 51,300 pieces. It's something ridiculous, like 24 foot long or something by seven foot tall. Uh, it's got um, all the wonders of the world on it. So it's pretty cool. It costs 700, 800 bucks or something ridiculous US. So it's a thousand dollar puzzle. 
but yeah, pretty cool. Um, if you had a really long wall and you were bored as hell, you could sit down and do this. Um, it'd be a nightmare if Jack was around because he'd come and trash it after he did it. <laughs> He'd have to start again. But yeah, look, that's a massive puzzle, something different. Um, especially nowadays, you wouldn't think puzzles would be that, uh, I guess, well received. But in these times when people, uh, we're all locked home and trying to minimise our outgoings, uh, it's very, I guess, probably it's come back into it. Everyone's doing the stuff like that, the puzzles and the and the books and all the all the all the readings and all the stuff, the edumacations. <laughs> so yeah, pretty cool. Uh, is Kim Jong-il dead? That's the big question. Or everyone wants to know at the moment, it's all over YouTube, the media, the news. Donald Trump says he uh, reckons he does know, but he can't tell us. I don't know why, um, but fair chance he probably doesn't know. Most people are saying that no one's got a clue. Uh, it's pretty, obviously, North Korea is a super, super tight place to get any info, let alone if they don't want you to get something, it'd be pretty easy for them to shut it all down. But uh, there was rumours floating around they got a bit sick. He might even have a bit of coronavirus action. Um, so, yeah, there's a, it is a bit of a trending topic at the moment, so I thought they'd bring it up. Let us know your thoughts or what do you reckon has happened to him? How, if he has passed, how has he gone? Um, he's uh, he's not well missed. He definitely wouldn't wouldn't hurt us anyone. The only problem is you just get someone else from that same nutcase party to take over. So uh, it doesn't really affect anything. Uh, I guess it's the devil you know against the devil you don't know, and I guess that's about the only thing you do have to worry. At least we know what we can what we've got with him but uh, I'd say it's a fair chance something's going down radio iPhone SE uh, this is a big topic today uh, Lou laid over on Lou over on unbox therapy did a two-part video on why you should get the iPhone SE and why you shouldn't buy the iPhone SE uh, I didn't watch the buy one because I pretty much had already made up my mind on it I and I had uh, he came out pretty strong and basically just give it to Apple um, and said that it was basically a joke. Uh, for a company that big and powerful with so many brilliant people working there, how can you bring out basically an uh, old phone with a new chip in it? And that's exactly what it is. Uh, at f now, the funny thing is, it's, to Americans it's $400 and here it's a $1,000 phone if you want to buy it with Apple Care. Uh, and the top uh, memory, the 256 memory. So you're not gonna buy for anything less than that. Uh, that's crazy. Because by the time you put photos and stuff on there, you'll fill up 32 meg, well, 32 gig easily. So it's definitely not worth buying at the eight, I think it's $800 base price here. Um, you can buy still brand new and packaged iPhone 8 for 300 bucks on eBay, three to 400. So why the hell would you buy this phone? Um, especially in Australia, and the, this is my two bob of it. In Australia, most phones you, you get with your plan. So when you go up on your plan, you, you're locked in for two years, but you get your phone as part of that plan. It's the only real benefit of being on a plan. Um, and you don't have to cough up that money and you keep the phone at the end of it. So why would you pay anywhere from $800 to $1,000 just for the faster chip. Um, you still got pretty much the same camera. The only benefit, extra benefit was portrait mode. There's no megapixel count. There's no difference. The videos, nothing there. Your storage hasn't got bigger. The form factor's the same. Cases fit the same. Really, the only difference is if you need a new battery. Uh, if your battery's dying on your old one, after three or four years, they tend to get a little bit old, but that's about the only reason you'd need it. Uh, my wife's got an iPhone 8, and there's no way I'd let her get an SE and spend that much money on an old, basically an old phone. It's, yeah, it's pretty darn crazy. I really don't know what they're thinking, and I think Lou hit the nail fair on the head there when saying it was pretty, uh, I guess, unimaginative by such a, co by a company that is renowned for its cutting edge, forefront, in front of everyone else technology 
to just go, let's just put this chip in there and make it cheap. Like, it's super, super mega lazy. Mega lazy, and yeah. Don't think it's worth anywhere near the money. Uh, if I can buy a brand new iPhone 8, why wouldn't I just go buy that for three, four hundred dollars? Uh, at the top end at 400, uh, I saved myself 600 bucks and I don't even need a new case. Like, it's just it's pretty retarded, Apple. Um, but yeah, so I think that was pretty interesting and it's good to see someone that has got the say, has got the balls to fire back at Apple and tell them to pull their heads in. It's like the new Magic Keyboard. Um, the keyboard that was constantly broken and breaking down, they... They've called this new keyboard a brand new keyboard. The only, it's just, you've just fixed a piece of shit. Like, you can't say, because I've fixed something, now it's new, it's all new, it's better. It's a brand new keyboard. Yeah, well, it has to be, because the old one was shit, and you wouldn't fix it. <laughs> you had to do something. It's not like you've, for, oh, let's make a new keyboard. You, it's the only way you could, it's just basically a repair for the same problem. But anyway, that's another issue. <laughs> Let's get on to some other fun stuff. But uh, yeah, that was my bit of bit of a crack at Apple. I think it's good. To, you, they should be have their uh, heads pulled in every now and again. And definitely on the SC, they should definitely uh, get some grief over that because it's pretty darn average. Uh, TSMC, uh, they're a well-renowned chip maker and they've made them for all sorts of different big companies uh, around the world. Um, they've just announced development of a two nanometer chip uh, the three nanometer, which they're doing, is already in the process of getting built, which is just insane. Basically, what we've got now, I think we're now the latest and greatest that's released is a seven nanometer, um, and that is all these A14s and new chips from um, Intel and all that. They're all looking at they're all seven nanometer, say so tenth gen chips, and your. Uh, AMD chips are all seven nanometer. They're seven. These guys are already work, just started working on a two nanometer. So that's one nanometer is, I think what they were saying was about the width of an atom. So it's only two atoms across for this little, um, oh, for this little chip. So it's just ridiculous. And then to fit all that computing power into there is just mind boggling. <laughs> so amazing. Now they reckon they're gonna have the two nanometer ready to go by 2025, five years. Five years. So the amount of that basically means that what's gonna be able to they're gonna be able to put in our phones is gonna be insane over the next five years. The technology is only gonna get bigger and better. Uh, it's just gonna blow your socks off just mind boggling that mobile devices will eventually, basically you won't need to have a big iMac Pro or a Mac Pro because your, your phone's pretty much gonna have the same grunt as an iMac Pro in say five years, I would I would imagine, something along those lines. That's how far the technology's just, just accelerating forward. So pretty amazing that they are already uh, getting the three nanometer under process and they're work, now working on this two nanometer. So soon it'll be less than an nanometer. It'll be just in, it'll be bloody atoms. We'll be, atoms will have a little atom in it. You won't even be able to see the part in your computer. It'll just be sealed in a little box somewhere. <laughs> um, DJI, now we were waiting. We knew what was, we sort of knew what was coming. The leaks dropped out and pretty much all the leaks and all those specs we got were exactly on the target. It is a Mavic Air 2, uh, $1,900 Australian. Holy crap, uh, that's expensive. I don't think you're gonna be buying that. Uh, that's for the fly more combo. So that's all the extra blades, the spare battery and stuff, which you're gonna get. You're not gonna just run with one battery. Uh, all the specs pretty much right. 34 minute flight time. That's with no wind on DJI site. So if you're getting any sort of wind up, you're gonna be sub 30 minutes which is probably the same as the last one. 570 grams, so you need to have your license, so it's not a Mavic Air, you know, it's still big enough that you still have to have your paperwork in uh, regards to that. Um, it's the concerning, the specs that I went in and got everywhere it said it was, it only works from minus 10 to 40 degrees Celsius. Now that's a big issue for us in, the uh, in Australia. 
Uh, on our work we are constantly over 40 degrees Celsius, so that's going to be an issue for this. That means it's going to struggle. We're probably going to have over temp issues for recording, battery and all sorts of things. So that was pretty, pretty weird. Normally you go from minus 10 to 50 and 50 is sort of borderline. We do get to 50, but it's mid, mid to 40s is about standard for us. Um, especially even even out in the outback when you're out bush fishing and stuff, it's well into the 40s. So very strange that they that these new brand new gear can't handle any sort of decent temperature. But that's Celsius. Um, so 40s are 104 Fahrenheit, but uh, we regularly get over that. So I don't know how these things are going to handle. It's only got a 3500 milliamp battery. Uh, 8 gigabyte storage, you can expand that up to 256 big, uh, 256 gigabyte. It does have a 38 watt charger, which is pretty cool, so it'll, it should charge fairly fast. Uh, we know about the camera, that nothing that's changed. It's an aperture of 2.8, so that's pretty good. Uh, it's It'll give you a good a little bit of, like it'll give you a little good amount of low light, but also give you a decent amount of focus and, and detail in the picture. Um, one meter is the closest it'll focus on, so that's pretty cool. ISO 100 to 6400, does exposure bracketing, panorama, all that stuff. It will shoot JPEG and DNG raw, um, and it's 4K 60 frames a second, which like, realistically, I mean, you can shoot it in that, but again, you probably only need two 1080 anyway. It's probably all you realistically need. So if you can get a good 1080, and it does do 1080, in, in FHD, it'll do 240 frames a second. So that's pretty good. I think that's good. But that's pretty standard, and it does it in the 265 format, so we're easy to work with. 10 kilometer range, they're saying. We did hear about eight kilometers uh, when in the specs the other day, so that's about right. You can't go that far anyway in, under Australian laws. You have to have line of sight at all times. No one can see eight kilometers away. So anyone who tries that is just flat and we've getting a fine anyway so now my question at $1,900 Australian for that uh, or I think it was about $1,700 or $1,500 just the base unit I think about $1,600, $1,700 uh, that's a lot of coin um, you can get a Mavic Pro for about $2,500, $2,200 on special so it's only a couple hundred bucks less than that Yes, it's a little bit smaller form factor wise, but I really don't think it's that good of a bargain. So definitely, uh, if maybe the Autel 6K is probably a better bet, and that's about 2,800 bucks. So it might be worth paying the extra grand to get the super high quality. Not much of a leak, uh, release from DJI, pretty subpar, much like the SE. Now Canon rumors, lastly, just want to quickly get that in. Uh, announced today there's two update bodies coming for the m50 yes uh we know september's the time frame that may get pushed back uh but he also has gone on there and said that it's going to be more about greater durability and performance than he expect which i've talked about previously something like a mini 1dx now he did say it won't be like a 1dmx but something along those lines nothing about what the mount will be whether there'll be one of the models will be the Pro version that may have the RF mount on it and your standard M50 has a normal M mount. I'm not sure, but good things for us M50 users. Uh, that's going to be super exciting and I can't wait to see it. Sweet. Right, hey guys, that's enough from me. I'll get out of here. I will see you all tomorrow. Let you know how tonight goes, fingers crossed. So uh, yeah, stay safe and enjoy a little bit of extra freedom we've got today or this week. Hope you've got to catch up with some friends and family you needed to see. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Whether you're coming, going, or staying home and staying safe. See you soon. See ya.